Hi there, I'm Mr. Tastic, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about end of year art classroom activity ideas. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. about end of year art lesson activity ideas. I am so excited um, because hey, summer's around the corner! Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited. So the very first idea I have for you, and I absolutely love this one, it is to do an art scavenger hunt. Yes. So basically it's a still like scavenger hunt. You give them a piece of paper, you can give different spaces to work or draw on. You can even do it like um, in halves, like if it's older students, I'd probably do like a uh, double side page and in halves, they have to find four things, right? Because they have to do a more, lot more intricate still lights. I'm thinking like middle school, high school level, but in elementary, maybe you can do it in like quarters and it can be double sided because they're not gonna, they're already, they're on their way out, right? They're checked out and we're just practicing <laughs> skills. <laughs> and keeping them occupied. So we're doing some movement built in with practicing and reinforcing art, um, and it's not going to ask a lot of them. Now, we're going to, and they might rush through it, so we don't want to make this our best effort ever, right? It depends on when you're doing this. This is on your like last days, like, it's all good. So um, we're going to do an art scavenger hunt, so we have to find and draw things. So each, there might be like draw something that you found on the floor. Draw <laughs> a lonely goldfish, whatever. A lonely goldfish cracker. I have this one time, <laughs> so gross. <laughs> one time I was cleaning my classroom, like as a classroom cleanup. <laughs> might have been before a break and the kids are helping and then there's like somebody moved his furniture or I did and the kid was like, oh my gosh, a goldfish cracker. This is like, this kid is not a kid anymore. This person's a, uh, now the eight, an adult. Like they're well into their 20s. So it's okay for me to share this. I'm not giving names even even so. So this is a very long time ago. Um, and, and they're no longer a child. They are uh, well into their 20s. Um, so boom, they're like, oh my gosh, there's a goldfish cracker under the bed. I'm like, ew, sweep it up. And the kid literally went down. <laughs> goldfish crackers. I was literally in shock. I'm like, <laughs> how did this just happen? I'm like, why would you do that? They're like, it was fine. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Sounds good. Anyways, art scavenger hunt. What are we talking about? I don't know. Oh yeah, there are a goldfish cracker on the ground. That's where I got, sorry, just super distracted there. Oh, yeah, so goldfish cracker on the ground. Um, find, draw your, your friend's shoe. <laughs> Make it weird, right? Not just draw your own shoe. Draw your friend's shoe. Um, uh, if you can go outside or in the halls, you can also add things like that. And that's going to be dependent on your school, your kids, um, their age, right? Like a high school, it's going to be different than an elementary school where you're probably not going to have them free for all through the, the school. Um, you could draw, uh, whatever, paper airplane, doesn't matter. You could make the paper airplane and like pre-suspend it from the ceiling. They're like, what? There's a paper airplane! <laughs> you got to draw that one. You got to go make one, right? <laughs> Find and draw, right? You can't go make and draw, go find and draw a paper airplane, whatever it is. So do a scavenger hunt, I highly recommend it. It's so fun. All right, now if you're part of my email list, um, then you might get some scavenger hunts. I try to do uh, monthly freebies. So if you're part of my email list, you will get that. Um, if you're not, you can just head on over to misartastic.com and then and sign up for any one of my freebies and you will automatically be added to my email list. And then I also try to send you lots of freebies that way because, you know, I got to help you out. All right. Um, number two is um, make and hide task cards. Yes. So um, again, it's about integrating that movement, sort of that kinesthetic learning at the end of the year. So instead of just giving them task cards, I like to hide the task cards and they have to do them in order. So they can't just, you have to like number your task cards and then go hide them like under tables. Like it depends on the age, right? If they're, if they're younger, it's gonna be easier hiding spots, but if they're like grade five, game on. Um, so like make and hide some task cards is a great option. Um, and it slows down to those kids. And those kids who don't typically want to engage or participate, they're gonna engage and participate because this is just ridiculous, right? So you're gonna go hide. It's just task cards, but now you've hid them. 
them. So now, now it's exciting. That's totally different, right? So now you're going to get participation. So now you're going to hide your task cards around the room. Maybe it was like five, ten of them. Um, and then they have drawing prompts. And if you have like five, you know, that's good for a day. But if you have ten of them, this might be your activity for a week. <laughs> And it can be legit assignments, right? Like you can have legit tasks on there, but you've hid them. So now they have to go work through it. And then you can give a stamp on, maybe they can make a little passport, like that has like a simple, you know, a, you know, former page and it just has numbers one to four. And then you can initial it when you get, to, when they come and show you, okay, I've done it. Boom, initial their little passport or whatever of completion. At the end, give the prize, right? Totally, this is hilarious. Um, and so, and also like totally deserve. And so you can just do your little task cards and they can work through their activities. Like go find a pencil and do a still life of a pencil, um, whatever it is, create an artwork that explores the, that shows what you know about the element of art line. So you can reinforce what they learned throughout the year, draw a self portrait in the style of Pablo Picasso, um, whatever it is. And that's going to reinforce what you learned, what they learned through the year. Um, and I think that would be very, very fun. So yeah, so you can make it relevant, right? It is learning and it's um, a review for the year, but it is done <laughs> as a scavenger hunt in your classroom and they have to complete it. Ah, wouldn't that be so great? I think so. Reinforce learning. All right, so my question to you, is oh yeah before i continue um i do have end of year art task cards so if you're looking for some pre-made end of year themed ones or sketchbook task cards i'll link to those in the description below the video and you can check them out and grab them and they're all pre-done and i think they're um the end of year ones i think are digital and print so if you want to have them for google you can or if you want to have them just as print then you can do that as well check them out description of the video all right, my question for you is, and then you can answer in the comment section below the video, <clears throat> what questions do you have about the end of the year? So let me know what you have in terms of questions. What questions do you have about um, the end of year? Could be about anything, planning, whatever it is. Let me know in the comment section below the video. All right, number three is end of year craft and write. Um, so I think that it'd be really fun if you did a craft and write with your students in the theme of the end of the year. Um, and then you could also do it not just as a craft, but also integrate some art elements so they can practice doing some lines and patterns um, on their craft. Um, they can choose and pick and choose and have a little bit more student choice in which elements they can cut out and glue on and pick their own arrangement and then color it in however paint or paint it however you want to finish it off in their own colors but you're not only just going to do a craft you can also integrate writing into it so then they can do a writing prompt um, for the end of the year maybe it could be a non-fiction thing or it could be a fiction um, writing thing um, and then they can do complete that for your their assignment right so they can have a non-fiction um, just reflection of the school year or maybe you want to do a, a fiction story about whatever it is the craft theme is and you can create a story based on it to go with it so it's it's a craft that's in, that's in, integrated with art that's inspiring writing and I think that's a great way to integrate literacy into art as well. Number four is to do an end of year reflection artwork so you can have students create an artwork that is a reflection of their memories from the year. Um, I think that is a super cute way to um, summarize and finish out the year is just thinking about maybe you can do a portrait of like then and now or you could do like a name artwork and then around it you can have like they can illustrate different symbols um, and pictures um, that represent their favorite memories from the year. And that would be really great too. All right, um, and then finally, before you move on uh, and finish off the year, don't forget if you do have a contract and you know you're coming back to your class and you're doing the same assignments or whatever, if you know what grades you're teaching or what you're teaching in the following year, then you can plan your first two weeks. You're not gonna plan more than that because that's crazy and, and sometimes things change. But photocopy some stuff and have your lesson plans done and day book written for the first two weeks of school. That way, you're not having to come in during your summer holidays to do that and prep, 
right? So you're going to have, and plus everybody's going to rush in and try doing the same thing at back to school time. So you're going to have those things, those two things done, the two weeks done, and then before you leave, so that way you can enter summer feeling stress free, free, you're ready to go, and you're ready to end the a year in a positive way with part of back to school already planned. So that way you know you're ready to go, right? You're not going to be like, oh, you're going to get into back to school and be like, oh, what, what am I teaching? What should I be teaching, right? No, you've already done this. You have your planning done. Now you can focus up on setting up your classroom, be more relaxed, have more free time off, whatever it is. All right, my friend, if you're looking for the Craft and Write or any end of year art projects, I do have a lot of pre-planned art lessons and you can find them in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I'll link to some of my favorites such as my end of year grid draws, my end of year challenge cards, um, my end of year art projects. They'll all be linked to below the description of the video so you can check them out. So if you're short on time or you're not really wanting to, uh, if you're wanting to just get through the end of year or you want something that is fully planned, all the worksheets are done, um, all the assessments done for you, all the, everything's done, right? I have done the whole planning part and creating part for you, then you can check them out below in the description of the video and it will help you out because your planning will be done in a snap. All right, my friend, that's it for this episode. Your next video to watch is um, time management tips. You can watch that video by clicking the link above or in the description of this video. And I'll see you in that episode, time management tips for art educators. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like and like this video and subscribe to the channel to help me continue creating these videos for you. And I will see you in the next episode.